رمضانها الذي لا له وظلاله وجماله رمضان السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Welcome to another edition of Soul Food on ITV. I'm your host, Manana Zakaria Philander. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-mursaleen. Sayyidina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. All thanks and praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the choices, peace, blessings and salutations upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing us to see another beautiful day in this month of Ramadan, which is very fast passing us by subhanallah. It is at this time, especially now that we have witnessed the month, significant days of the month, the month drawing slowly to a close, that we should start taking stock and recognizing that this guest that is called Ramadan, it is not going to be here forever. That this opportunity, this golden opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given to the Muslims as a gift, it is not going to be here forever, but it is going to reach an end. And we, we pray and we make dua unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we utilize it to the best of our ability subhanallah we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant each and every one of us the best of the month of Ramadan subhanallah this month most definitely of which the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam says that a caller calls out in a riwayah the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says yunadi munadin that a caller calls out kulla laylatin every night of the month of Ramadan ya baghi al khair aqbil oh that person who is desirous of good aqbil step up come forward proceed wa ya baghi al shar aqsir and oh that one who revels in wrongdoing desist and resist and stop what you are doing Subhanallah, every night this invitation is given to the one who is desirous of good, that step up, step forward, do that which is good, approach that which is good. Subhanallah, this is the month wherein good is facilitated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the month where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had made that the Muslims all keep their fast globally. They are engaged in this ibadah of fasting. It is a month where the doing of good is facilitated, where obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is made easy. And it is the month of Siyam. It is the month of fasting from the Arabic word Sawm. The literal meaning of the word Sawm, what does it mean? It means to reach the highest peak, subhanallah. So this month of Ramadan is that month of Siyam where the believer works hard to gain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, works hard to serve his fellow man so that he can reach the best possible and the highest possible status and rank with regard to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the month of good subhanallah. And like we have said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitates the doing of good. And this is why we fast. What is the fast? Fast is imsak. It is to withhold ourselves and to restrain ourselves from eating and from drinking and from intimate relations with the, with the spouses, subhanallah. But this eating, not eating and not drinking and this refraining from intimacy, subhanallah, is it the maqsad of fasting? Is that the true objective of fasting? Shar'an, yes, that is the legal requirement. But the true objective of staying away from food, of staying away from dink, of staying away from intimacy, is so that we can bring the nafs under control. It is so that we can control ourselves, so that we don't give in to our low base desires, subhanallah. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had made as a gift for us. That in the month of Ramadan, usually we break away from the norm. It is our norm to satisfy our, our urges to eat and to drink and so on and so forth. This is normal. But in the month of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us that what is normal and habit, you can break. 
You can break what you consider normal and you can break what you consider habit. You are not a slave of what you consider normal. You are not a slave of what you consider habit. You are a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says refrain, you refrain. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says do, then you do. Allahu Akbar. This is the month where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had flung open the gates of Jannah. The gates of Jannah are open, subhanallah, because of the good deeds that people do. We are engaged in good deeds, and those good deeds, they find a place. And the place for these good deeds is not Jahannam. The place for these good deeds is Jannah. And the good deeds that we do, they are the seeds that we are sowing. And those seeds we will find in Jannah. We will find it in the form of palaces. We will find it in the form of gardens. We will find it in the form of rivers flowing from beneath hill hillocks, subhanallah. And this is the Jannah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had kept in store for the believers, subhanallah. The Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, to make it a little bit more clear, had said in a hadith, إِذَا جَاءَ رَمَضَانَ فُتِحَتْ أَبَوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ When Ramadan comes, then the doors of Jannah are opened wide. وَغُلِّقَتْ أَبَوَابُ النَّارِ And the doors of the, of, of the fire, hellfire, are closed, subhanallah. And why is it that the doors of the hellfire are closed? Because the good deeds that men do, Jahannam is not the place for those things. Subhanallah. The nafs is brought under control. Subhanallah. And when the nafs is brought under control, we know that shaitan is brought under control. Because how does shaitan mislead us? Shaitan it misleads us through our nafs. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam had advised, Inna shaitan yajri fi insan majrad dam aw kama qala alayhi salatu wasalam that verily shaitan he runs through the veins of the sons of Adam like blood runs through their veins subhanallah but if you keep your nafs under control if you control the low base desires then you are basically tying shaitan up you are giving him no way to be able to delude you to deceive you to bring you into deception and to take you into wrongdoing. Subhanallah. That is why the Prophet ﷺ had said with regard to the month of Ramadan, Sufidat shayateen that the shayateen, they are tied up, they are locked up. And indeed, this is an amazing thing. And it is a big thing in the month of Ramadan. Because who is shaytan? Shaytan is that enemy unto insan. That enemy that the Quran reminds us about. Inna shaytan lakum adu. Verily, shaytan is an enemy unto you. Fattakhiduhu aduwa. So take him as your enemy. And what is shaytan's objective? His objective is to get us to forget the remembrance, not to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to engage in other than the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this month of Ramadan, most definitely, it is a month of control. It is a month of kasr shahwa It is a month where we break the desire. And in that, where we bring ourselves under control, where we tie up the shayateen, and where we are able to do good deeds, and the facilitating of good deeds is then made easy for us. We'll be back after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Welcome back. You're watching Soul Food on ITV. This morning we are discussing Ramadan, Siyam, and the importance of this month of Ramadan and what it holds for us of opportunity, subhanallah. The Prophet alayhi salatu was salam had said in the hadith, As-sawmu li wa ana ajazibi. In the hadith Qudsi, he relates that, the, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had said that the fasting is mine, the fasting is for me, and I will reward accordingly, subhanallah. Fasting is solely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake. It is such an action that involves a person abstaining and not doing. It is for this reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, as li," Because the fasting, it is something that is a secret between the slave and between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For it is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who truly knows the condition of the fasting person. It is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who truly knows the extent of the fasting of the individual. 
It is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who knows the condition of the heart of that individual subhanallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fasting is mine and I will reward accordingly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't attach a specific reward because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward the slave according to the extent of the dedication, according to the extent of the service, according to the extent of the sacrifice. So my dear uh, brothers and sisters, ex ex extend yourself in this month of Ramadan. Make it a month of sacrifice. Make it a month of exertion purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For as we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward us abundantly inshallah ta'ala. The Prophet alayhi salatu was was asked one day by a companion and he was asked, Murni bi amrin yanfa'uni Allahu bihi. O Prophet of Allah, command me with something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will benefit me when I do that action. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam told him, alayka bisawm, that you must engage in the fasting. فَإِنَّهُ لَا مِثْلَ لَهُ For indeed there is no nothing like it, subhanallah. There is nothing like the month of Ramadan. There is nothing like fasting in the month of Ramadan. It is a very unique ibadah. It is that ibadah that where you don't only extend yourself for taqarrub ilallah, but you also extend yourself in humanity and for humanity. And through extending yourself for humanity, you also gain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To also to elaborate, the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam had said, مَن لَمْ يَدَعْ كَوْلَ الزُّورِ وَالْعَمَلَ بِهِ فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةٌ أَنْ يَضَعَ طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَهُ That the fasting is not only about abstaining from food and abstaining from drink. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had said that whomsoever engages in false speech, in false testimony, in lies, in any type of speech that, in, that will result in sin, or in any type of action that will incur sin, فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ أَنْ يَضَعَ طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of that individual to leave of his food and to leave of his drink. Subhanallah, here we learn another very important aspect of the month of Ramadan. That the month of Ramadan, it is a month of fasting, but not only fasting of, the, of food and drink, it is the fasting of the limbs, subhanallah. It is that the tongue should speak only the truth. It is that the eye should look only at that which is beneficial. It is that the ear should listen to, to only that which will enrich the body. It is that the body should be engaged only in that which will draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the opportunity that the believer has. This is the month of maghfirah. It is the month of Rahmah. It is the month of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the month of the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The best dua that can be made in this month that the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam had taught is Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anna O Allah, innaka afuun Indeed you are the one who forgives. You are the one who pardons. You are the one who overlooks. In Allah innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa You love to pardon, you love to forgive, you love to overlook Fa'fu anni So forgive me, pardon me and overlook my shortcomings Subhanallah This is the dua taught to us by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Because this is the month where the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there for the believer the, forgive, the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there for the taking. Let us humble ourselves. Let us humble ourselves towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and use this opportunity. Whether we are spending our day engaged in work, whether we are spending our day engaged in looking after our families, looking to our needs, the needs of our brethren, our economic needs, whether we are traveling, whatever it may be, don't forget that we are in a special month and that you have a special opportunity and that you should use each and every moment in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Such is the month of Ramadan that each moment that you are experiencing the siyam, each moment of the day that you are in a state of fasting, you are being rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
because each moment while you are refraining from eating and drinking it is a moment of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so increase in that obedience and how do you increase in that obedience increase in your salah see to it that your salah is being made on time every time inshallah meet have your meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have your intimate conversations with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the month where you bring your needs in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the month where you pour your heart out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you ask him for whatever it is that you require and for whatever it is that will be good for you in this dunya and in the year after subhanallah it is shahrul rahmah Shahr al it is Shahr al min al nar it is that month where there is freedom from the hellfire subhanallah in this month of Ramadan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees those slaves who come to him humbly he frees them and he guarantees them that they will not enter the hellfire we should be desirous of whatever this month of Ramadan has to offer inshallah ta'ala we'll be back after the break Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Welcome back. You're watching Soul Food on ITV. And this morning, I'm expounding on the benefits of the month of Ramadan and how we need to actually take this opportunity, each and every opportunity in the month of Ramadan, and utilize it to gain proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, utilize it to draw close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and not let this opportunity pass us by. Subhanallah, none of us are ever too bad. Subhanallah to become good none of us has done so much wrong that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unable to forgive Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is abundant Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is infinite and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can forgive us and not only forgive us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can turn our misdeeds into good deeds and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can raise us in rank if we approach him in the proper manner it is not too late. Let us return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Kul ya asrafu ala anfusihim, O those of my slaves who have committed excesses against themselves, la taqnatu min rahmatillah. Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jami'a. If verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive sins, all of it, subhanallah. Yes, it is the month of forgiving of sins, subhanallah. It is that month wherein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is prepared to look at the slave with mercy, depending on how the slave approaches Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we are saying, and the advice this morning is, approach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't be shy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Approach him humbly. Approach him with humility and call upon him with the best of his names and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring about that change in our lives that is going to draw us closer to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala understands our weaknesses. Before he says in the Quran, insanu da'ifa, that indeed man had been created weak. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recognizes that man will falter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recognizes that man will sometimes fail. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even recognizes that man will sometimes be disobedient to him. But subhanallah, who is the best of people? Who is the best of those who do wrong? The best of those who do wrong and the best of those who falter and the best of those who make a mistake is At-Tawwabun, those who return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ramadan is that month of returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala understands our challenges. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows our deepest emotions. He is our creator. He understands how he had created us. Subhanallah. Even with regard to the, the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they were even challenged in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember what happened at the battle of Uhud? At the battle of Uhud, when they were stationed and they were given strict instructions to follow the commands of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to not to leave their posts. After we find 
at the Battle of Uhud after there was a victory and after the Muslims seemed that they almost won this battle, we know what happened. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about it in the Quran. Let me remind you of the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدَ صَدَقَكُمُ اللَّهُ وَعَدَهُ إِذْ تَحُسُّونَهُمْ بِإِذْنِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He was true to you in His promise when He allowed you victory over them. حَتَّى إِذَا فَشِلْتُمْ until you flinched, subhanallah, وَتَنَازَعَتُمْ And until you started to dispute, we know when the Muslims, when they saw that they were winning the war, when they were winning the battle, they wanted to become part of those who were amassing the booty. They wanted to start leaving their stations. From amongst them were those who said, we have to obey Rasulullah and we have to stay on our, on our positions because whatever the Prophet wasallam says, you must take it. But from amongst them were those who were saying, but the battle is won. Let us partake in the, in the victory of the battle. And then Allah says, وَتَنَزَعْتُمْ You were disputing, وَعَصَيْتُمْ And you disobeyed, مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا أَرَاكُمْ مَا تُحِبُّونَ After Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had showed you from the booty and from the dunya the things that you love. Of the Sahaba, Allah says, مِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُرِيدُ الدُّنْيَا From amongst you were those who chose the dunya. وَمِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُرِيدُ الْآخِرَةِ And from amongst you were those who chose the year after. Subhanallah. We find that in that battle, there were those who were rushing for the dunya, but we also find that there were others in the form of Hamza radiallahu an, who was martyred. Handala radiallahu an, he was martyred. Mus'ab bin Umayr radiallahu an, he was martyred. And then there were others who were fighting valiantly, protecting Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it was a turn of fortune for the Muslims, subhanallah. A victory, a seeming victory, then turned and the fortunes turned. And as a result, 70 of the Sahaba had lost their lives. Despite this weakness, despite them flinching, despite them disputing, despite them falling into error, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدَ عَفَا عَنْكُمْ That indeed He had overlooked for you, He had pardoned you, He had forgiven you. Allahu Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows our weaknesses and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever ready to forgive us. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is prepared to forgive the Sahaba, the Sahaba were men and women like us, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be prepared to forgive us and to overlook for us as well, subhanallah. Even the Prophet alayhi salatu was advised, وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضَّ الْغَلِيضَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ أو rather فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ It is because of Allah's mercy on the Sahaba, that you, O Muhammad, that you are soft and kind and gentle with them. وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيضَ الْقَلْبِ If you were hard and if you were hard-hearted, لَنْ فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ They would have dispersed from away from you. فَعْفُ عَنْهُمْ But seek pardon for them. وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ And seek forgiveness on their behalf. Allahu Akbar. The Prophet alayhi salatu is being commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seek forgiveness for the misdeeds and for the errors and for the faults of your companions. Seek forgiveness and for the misdeeds of your ummah, Allahu Akbar. So who are we then? We are of the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We should seek forgiveness for our own misdeeds. We should approach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we should seek forgiveness for the misdeeds of others. And we should gain proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through holding firm onto the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear brothers and, sis uh, and sisters, listen to the advices that the month of Ramadan that you are getting from the imams, from the shuyukh. Listen to the Quran that is being recited. Take in the hadith that you are, are, are hearing and make all this a benefit for you so that on the day of Qiyamah, when you approach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will approach Him in a manner that He will be pleased with you and that you will be pleased with what He has installed for you. That brings us to the end of this episode. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.